One day, King David was walking around the roof of his palace and saw a woman bathing in her home. Her name was Bathsheba, the wife of a soldier named Uriah, who was off fighting in the war. David thought she was beautiful and sent his messengers to get her. They brought her to him and David and Bathsheba slept with one another. Shortly after, Bathsheba sent word to David that she was pregnant with David's child. To hide what he had done, David quickly devised a plan. He called Uriah back from the war, hoping that he would sleep with Bathsheba and it would look like he had gotten her pregnant. But when Uriah came home, he slept on a mat outside his house because he didn't want to disrespect his fellow soldiers still at war by living comfortably while he was at home. So David came up with another plan. He sent Uriah back to the battlefield and instructed the commander to put Uriah on the front lines of battle where he was most likely to be killed. And that's exactly what happened. Shortly after, David married Bathsheba and she gave birth to their son. But God was unhappy with David and sent Nathan to tell him a story. There were two men, one rich and one poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little lamb who was like a child to him. Now a guest comes to the home of the rich man, but instead of taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal, the rich man steals the poor man's one sheep and kills it. David was furious. This man must die for what he has done, David said. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. David immediately realized how wrong he had been and confessed to Nathan and to God all of the things he had done. Even though God forgave David, there were still terrible consequences because of his actions. David and Bathsheba's infant son became sick and died. Then, years later, their second son, Absalom, did something no one, even David, expected. He gathered an army together to overthrow his father as king. Before the battle began, David gave instructions to his soldiers not to kill Absalom. But during the battle, Absalom was riding a mule under the thick branches of a large oak tree and his hair got caught in the tree, leaving him hanging as the mule rode away. One of David's commanders, Joab, found Absalom. And despite David's instructions, he and his soldiers drove their spears through Absalom and killed him. Because of this, David was heartbroken, wishing that it had been him who died instead of his son. Even after these tragedies, David continued to worship God. He had not forgotten about God's promise to one day build the temple. So David told his son, Solomon, that he was to start building it. In his final days as king, David led the Israelites in worship of God for all of the ways that God had helped them and provided for them over the years. Then, shortly before his death, David handed over his kingship to Solomon.